Hello Supreme Commanders, welcome to today's 5 versus 5 taken down on the old Neroxis map gen. There's been an absolute drought of decent games lately. That's in no small part due to the instability at the moment of the FAF, I'm sure you regulars will know. All sorts of connection problems, desyncs and so forth. I've wasted 7 or 8 hours of my life this last week trying to find a decent game to bring you. Couldn't do it. Until today, that is, until this game here. Thank you very much, Darkness, for helping uh, to find this one. He posted it over on the FAF Discord. So, thank you very much, Darkness. It uh, indeed will pan out to be a good one. I'm sure those of you that stay with us will realise that. And then uh, just one last thing before we kick off. Uh, hello to David, who's joined the patrons uh, the other day. And also a big welcome to Andy. Both of those guys new on the Patreon thing. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start introducing our players. As we said, it is a 5 versus 5. As you can see, they're averaging at 12, actually 12.25 average, even though it's rounded it down, this one Supreme Scoreboard. Uh, so let's go ahead, introduce our teams, and for no other reason than they are team number one. We'll make a start here. On the west side, it's Blaze of Lasher. There's about five different ways we've been over this before of ways of saying this guy. Let's just call him Blaze. He's a cyber and he's a thousand rated. I actually think he's a little above a thousand. But there he is in yellow. Making his way down south. And he's gone first air, interestingly enough. So moving further to the north is Xbox T. If we can find him, there he is. He's a cyber and he's the highest player or the highest rated player, should we say, in today's game. At 1600 Seraphim, they're going first land. Moving to his east in sky blue, we have ourselves Mr. Death. Sounds scary. <laughs> there was once this doctor called Dr. Death, and he pronounced... I'm not joking. Dr. Death, but he's, he's, he's pronounced Diath. Diath. He obviously didn't go by Dr. Death. But it was written Dr. Death, yeah. Dr. Diath himself... We'll have to see if he lives up to his name in Sky Blue there. He's a 1200 having gone first land. Moving to his north in Electric Blue is yet another Seraphim. Is Nano Cube Noob. First time we featured this guy on our channel. He's 1100 rated. But with a name like that, I mean... <laughs> name of the century, Nano Cube Noob. I love it. Uh, he's, uh, like as we said there, going first and second land in the Electric Blue. And then last but not least for his team in the old mustardy colour is... Let's just go with Neuro. It's Neuro Ult, as best I can say. Uh, but we'll go with Neuro. He's the uh, first UEF as well for today, having gone first land. Quickly, let's switch around the teams, then moving on to the lower east side. Up here in purple, we've got Butter. He's from the DEA. Is that the Drug Enforcement Administration, or is it the Drug Enforcement Agency? I'll leave you to decide that one, but for now, either way... <laughs> He's Butter in purple. He's a 1200 there. Moving down then to the south spot, we've got Stridex at a 1400 from the GB clan. He's the highest rated for his team in UEF, having gone first, land, second air, or vice versa. It's either way, it's first or the second. And then over here, we've got God of War in Ferrari Red. He's 1100, having gone first, second, and third land. Uh, so this guy, very heavy on the spam. I usually like to say hello to the commander. Um, there he is, just so he doesn't feel left out. The God of War. Don't know if he's going to live up to... Well, was Sun Tzu a God of War? Or was he just a famous general? I don't know. But perhaps his book, The uh, Art of War, you know, it's probably written by a God of War was that book, wasn't it? You know, appear strong when you're weak and appear weak when you're strong, all that sort of stuff. At last couple of players, then let's get round these real quick. Over here, we've got Babel. He's in Aeon. I think he's our first Aeon we've introduced today. In fact, he's the only Aeon featuring in today's game. He's a 1300, having gone first land, and that's it. Uh, taking a very long time to get second factory online. It looks like he's going there for the Navy. And then last and certainly not least is Alex. Alex with Triple X. Uh, he's another UEF there, an 1100. In white, making his way to the north, having gone. Let's have a look in his base. First land as well, going for a very fast upgrade. Already 60% on his way to a tech two inside four minutes 45. And so with that, let's zoom out. Let's take a little look at the map. It is the old Neroxis map, Jen, which means first and last time we see it. And what I really like about this map is 
Not only is it a 20 by 20, but it really is a 20 by 20. See, too many of these big, ugly black borders where they're like 12 and a half or 13 and three quarter kilometer size. This one not. And let's have a little look at the old mass reclaim. A lot of numbers on there. So let's zoom in on some of these and we can see in between these weird looking trees that we're familiar with on these red maps are a ton of rocks. They're seemingly all 10 mass a piece, or at least rounded off to 10. Uh, to the nearest 10, they could, you know, could of course be 11 mass in each one, who knows. But there's a lot of them, so well worth getting engineers out and on the drop. And so with that said and done, intros out the way, map intro out the way, let's see how we go. We've got first drop over here from Blake. I'm telling you what, man, this guy, it, it may say a thousand to the nearest thousand, but I still think... Yeah, you don't often see 1,000 rated players dropping across the map inside five or six minutes. He's escorting his drop with a Jester gunship as well. He's got scouts and interceptors on standby. Potentially a contest here. Is this his uh, main base? Ah, this is his main base with his air. So I like what he did. He just went straight forward and has established a very strong forward operating base here. Four land factories online. I'd like to see him continue. He's also establishing down here. Yeah, very, very aggressive expansion here from the 1000 rated. Blaze, 10 points to you, sir. Over here, God of War already going for the gun. 10%, 6 minutes 42. Well, why not? If it's all quiet on the Western Front, why not go for the gun? Check over here. Stridex, uh, well, what can only be described as the airplane. He's gone for a very fast Tech 2 and is rushing out the Janus here. Using engineers there to assist his second factory for support Tech 2, the HQ. And is how many has he got there? He's working on a second, and well, it's just a repeat order for now, so who knows how many he's going to go for. Coming up to the north, I get no doubt requests there from his team, Babble. There we saw the ping go down from him. You can only actually see who sent the ping when we are in team view. And Babble no doubt wanting Alex. Hey, push north, grab these, man. Come on, what are you waiting for? As our German friends would say at the traffic lights, Grüner Wetznet. Which basically means, you know, it don't get any greener, don't that traffic light. And for whatever reason, Alex deciding, well, just man, this is the worst possible use of a commander early on. Just a lazy patrol order in and amongst trees. Like, it's just horrific. In the mid, we see both players or both teams making a play for the pond. However, Mr. Death is outnumbered. Two versus one at this moment in time, favoring the southern team. Incidentally, team one up the top in yellow, team two down here in red. And so, yeah, Mr. Death got his work cut out for him. Even if he is against, uh, well, Alex and Babel actually, 11 and 1300. So, you know, the score wise, relatively even, but, you know, so two versus one, it's just not going to work out. All else being even, Babel coming through the pond, no doubt trying to make a surprise attack over here. So far, just with the gunboats, there's a lot of engineers here from Alex, and he is indeed rushing an upgrade. He's kept a sub behind for security. Babel's also left a frigate behind for security as well, which is nice. And at 50-odd percent, I can't see very much stopping that upgrade from completing. Western Front, once again... Just minor raids here from players. Blaze looks like he's got just enough units there to prevent the overrun. He does, of course, have factories nearby. God of War electing to take out one of the engineers. He does get one of the engineers, and I suspect that will be about it. Unless Blaze forgets about this one tank that is just outside the range of the Mantis. 
But there is a reinforcing mantis coming through yet. Yeah, that is going to be a hold at least at this moment in time for Blaze. But he certainly don't want to let up on production. Not least because God of War has got him send the gun. How big that right arm is now on the Seraphim Commander. Look at these Janus. Stridex has gone real big on the Janus and is going after multiple targets on the other team. I'm not sure if that was a Tech 1 air factory or if it had been upgraded to Tech 2. It was the first factory built, I believe, there by Blaze. And Stridex, rather than hanging around and losing or chucking away his Janus, it's actually brought them away. There's seven of them here. Some of them with three kills there. Not all of them, but a lot of them. He's brought up even more. How many is he going for? It's not. He's got 15 Janus inside 11 minutes. It's not often you see an air player rush Tech 2 at the expense of Tech 3. Don't want to hang around this area longer than he has to. He doesn't... Wow, those Tech 2 air-to-air -air capabilities improved somewhat. I don't remember the fighter bombers being that good sure he did have the numbers versus the interceptors but only just it's now going for tech 2 mass points and that is overkill 6 or 7 Janus per mass point I mean the upshot is it won't leave any wreckage behind 2 waves going after and yeah nano cube noob He'll thank his lucky stars. He got the Seraphim shield there. The Flax going after the Janus. The Janus carry on. This is a beautiful target. Three Tech 2 power generators and a shield trying to go up. He takes out two of the three as well as the shield, but has lost half of his Janus at this moment in time. Blaze does get on the six with a bunch of interceptors, but look at them just tumbling out the sky. As Stridexer makes a turn for a fight. And we've got our first ASF on the area now. Thanks to Bot. X Bok, should we say. And these ASF having much better luck with the Janus. And that's going to be it. Beautiful attack from Stridexer. Not something we normally see. The uh, Janus used in such force in such a short amount of time a quick check down here god of war looking very strong on the lower west side and together with the commander and the gun and all this artillery i'm not seeing how blaze can hold on to this he's desperately trying to get this factory up to tech 2 but uh just feels like he's pissing in the wind at this point delaying the inevitable throwing good money after bad if ever there was such an allergy to be made in subcom this is it but something that's really concerning me now for team one is the combined efforts here of team two they've already got an attack two up front destroyer on destroyer mr death as a destroyer as well it's going to be so close with just 500 hit points alex's destroyer remains now just 375 Mr. Death forced to spam Tech 1 anti-air guns thanks to those Janus. All of that build capacity that could have been used to try and defend his base against an air attack that just hasn't been repeated. And he couldn't afford it anyway, being in a 2v1 situation. Now this looks like a comfortable win now for Team 2. Mr. Death, the only player from Team 1 that went in the drink. And this is a huge uh, pond or lake, should we call it, in the middle of the map. You know, you get Tech 2 cruisers with the missiles. You you're talking about a large area of denial here. Check it in up on the Upper East Side. Babel taking on a few ill sheets. Does he have... He's got to have the overcharge or he's dead. And he does... He could perhaps do with a little more energy. He's not able to one-shot these Ilshis. 
Just a thousand hit points left. And Babel is the first one down. The 1300, the second highest on his team. Defeated by Nano Cube Noob, the 1100 in electric blue. Nice drop over here from Butthurt. Ferries across three Titans. We'll go and then move them, man. This is a very nice rush, but keep them rushing. We see over here that Mr. Death... Units temporarily forgotten, it would seem. And again, at 1,200, you can sort of let them off. I mean, again, go on, push, man. Push, push, push. Huge wave of torpedo bombers here from Xbox. Of course, we expect there to be a bit of a dry spell from Stridex having gone so heavy on the Janus. Xbot rushing instead straight to Tech 3. Got air control. And is now making use of that air control by chucking torpedo bombers onto the Navy. Belonging to Team 2, just 10 torpedo bombers remain now, but really the damage is done yet cruiser clearly the priority 22 kills that boat had there from alex before going down we've got destroyers here 12 14 kills a piece another oh, it's just a tech one boat back here so very nice pick up there and again stridex are just chuckling in a couple of interceptors and they will eventually take off the hit points of these torpedo bombers and he is now also bringing in a few ASF, which may bag all of the torpedo bombers. We see Xbox is moving in with ASF of his own. Is it too little, too late? Now another cruiser out from Alex. This is going to make it a very expensive place for Xbox to fly over. And at least for now, Xbox is electing to do so. And has won the air fight. Continues to pick off both ASF as well as the Janus there belonging to Stridexer. Does now realise he's got a bail. Yeah, very expensive cruiser already with six kills. It's surely going to get another one. And there it is, another ASF tumbling out the sky. Stridexer with what little he's got left pursuing the retreat in ASF. But I don't think he's got the numbers. We see here these Titans... Finally given the move order, one going down there, x with Volthus, the Tech 2 gunship going after him. And this is a Tech 3 mass extractor that's capped off. The second Titan down doesn't look like it's going to be able to chew through the hit points. Nonetheless, keeps the air on their toes. Nano Cube noob there, we just saw him getting his Tech 3 upgrade. Checking in down here. And God of War did indeed push Blaze out of the lower west side. And that's going to tighten up the front a little bit for both players as God of War continues to push north. He's trickling in Tech 1 bombers and Blaze actually, you know, again impressive that he's gone both land and air. Xbox now moving in with what few ASF he's got. And he may be able to bag all of these interceptors here with the Tech mismatch. And that's going to be a nice pickup and a nice bit of vet for these ASF. Very nice assist. And we see here once again Mr. Death not giving up, trying to get naval yards online a little further around. But with multiple cruisers moving in, although this one did just get picked off by a beautiful artillery shot here. This Gunther paying for itself with that one shot. One kill. Little raid over here from Neuro, but running into superior tech. He has got tech too. It's not just spam pillars here, but more and more titans coming up from the DEA. And that's going to leave Neuro a little butt hurt. And that squad there completely wiped out. Neuro is though reinforcing this time with a bunch of titans of his own. In fact, what we got here... 15 titans on the next squad 
Perhaps Butthurt's going to have a false sense of security after that successful attack. He's got eight Titans, so he's mismatched by about two to one here. In fact, Butthurt, take a look at his eco here. This is inexcusable to have 19,000 mass in the tank inside 20 minutes. Like, you need to be spending it or at least handing it off to a teammate. I mean, how can you have Tech 2 mass extractors when you've got that much mass? Just upgrade them to Tech 3. So here's this attack that we were seeing now coming down. Go on then, keep pushing, man, keep pushing. If you're going to advance with an army like this, the element of surprise is what you've got. But it realizes he can't win and it starts to pull back. He's flying in, supporting units, which is nice. And this is something we see the highest skilled players doing. Flying high value units around the map to reinforce lines it's not something you'd usually see a 1200 doing so props to him for that but yeah alex looking increasingly dangerous in the drink now shielding up his cruisers which is basically his curtains for team one with regards to controlling the pond and if we have a just a little look on the range of this cruiser look at the area of denial with these missiles He's no doubt going to saturate the coastline with more. We've got another cruiser here. Things relatively static on the lower west side. I am surprised despite the initial aggression. Beautiful run by here from Nero. He's got nine of the titans left he did initially have a bunch more i'm not sure what you see one of these Percy's with a kill some of these titans have got a few kills so it could have perhaps been a bad formation but this is all tech three capped off here from stridexer three mass points that's 81 mass per tick and providing that nero gets them all he's got one of them take a look at stridex's eco right now at 400 mass per tick so that accounts for about 20 percent of his total income right there and it's just been wiped off nero not hanging around to be killed by the missiles continues to move and yeah no surprise there moves to the next mass point although this just a tech two but still well worth getting there was a tech two power generator as well as some tap missile defense Engineers rush together a couple of Tech 1 point defense, but alas, it is only going to be a couple. They go down. And there we go, another Tech 2. So that is a significant dint into Stridex's income. Taking a look here and finally a little push with the old Ilshis. Probably my favourite Tech 2 unit in the game, the Ilshi. I was referred to it as a walking Tech 1 point defence. DPS slightly less than a Tech 1 point defence, but it's, it's basically a point defence. Come on! Who's going to disagree with me on that? Euro continues to press over here. I tell you what, man, what a really successful raid we've had here. Six Titans remain. It's being pursued by a couple of Titans, but this broadsword will put an end to it. Again, three more Tech 3 mass points here. And at this point, it's like, okay, you're going to die. Neuro, so you might as well get as many of these mass points as you can, because you're not going to get out else done. So there's another Tech 3. So these have got, between them, at least four Tech 3 mass points. We saw the couple of Tech 2 mass points as well. But it does now look like they've met their ends. They've been forgotten about. Percy continues to move in, but we've got numerous Percy's, even if Neuro recognises it now. But what a successful mission. 10, 10, I don't know what was it initially. It was more like 16, but there were 10 or so that broke through. 10 titans for four take three mass points well worth it yeah so no surprise at all here from alex just stacking up the cruisers right on the coastline 
I'm picking off. Targets here from range. In come the missiles. And there you can see the health of the mass extractor go. And it's gone, and there goes the wreck. But hurt, 24 minutes. The first guy to knock out an experimental. We saw him float in a shed load of mass. Perhaps that's why, but her, I take it all back. You were floating mass because you were saving up for the experimental. And it's not a monkey lord, it's a fat boy. Not often do you see a fat boy inside 25 minutes, but you do today. And that's in addition to his Tech 3 Titans that he's had on the line. Cruiser's making all sorts of headway here. 19 kills for this guy, 19 kills for this guy, 4, 1, there's a shield boat, 12, 3, 5, 19, and 7. Weird though we know that there were 3 ships with 19 kills there. Oh, we've got our first Tech 3 on the line. A Torrent class missile ship, it's already got 2 kills. Well... If T1 thought they had problems with TAC missiles, now they've really got problems. And I can only assume there that Mr. Death Control K'd his... And he did indeed. He Control K's his power gens. He knew he was going to lose them anyway. He might as well send an engineer in on reclaim duty and get some mass for it as he starts spamming TAC missile defense back here. One cruiser gets a little too close to the coastline. Lazy with a bunch of rhinos and they do pick off the cruiser. That was a nice snag. We also have ourselves a defense sat here from Neuro. Oh, what a unit to go after the Navy. Three kills already and the shield bolt is the perfect target once it's gone down. And he looks like he's going to get it in one blast. Go on, finish it off. Oh, my goodness. Finish it off, man. And he does finish it off. Oh, finish the crew. What sort of aiming is this? Why don't you finish him off, man? He's moving him out of the way, perhaps to shut down this expansion here. Got a bunch of Volthus moving in. Look at this. Multi-attack. The spread moves here. Incidentally, they are looking at bringing the spread move into a core function of the game. Until now, you needed a, or the split move, should I say. You needed a mod to split units up like that. For those of you that have not aware of it there was a mod and what you would do is you'd select multiple aircraft like here from stridex so you'd hold shift you'd click one two three four five how many waypoints you wanted and then you'd press the command to split the units off and each would go a separate way and while i've been babbling mr death no doubt telemazed in we do see he was the cybran into stridex's base and that brings it back to a four versus four Yeah, the Cybran Commander goes in. We see their Stridex are spamming Tech 1 bombers to deal with the Telemazer from the Cybran, and he was able to do so. Has lost half his air grid, and we do have now Defense Sap moving in. Looks like Stridex, by the skin of his teeth, is going to get a shield online. Indeed, he does before the Defense Sap has chance to shoot it out. Got a heavily damaged exposed fusion here, and that's exactly what the sat's going for. Nice destruction. Probably worth going for the other fusion here that's heavily damaged first. See the engineers here from Stridex are rushing themselves a Tech 3 shield. And yeah. Neuro recognizes the weakness there. Go for this one, man. Go for the other fusion. Oh, it's going to be, I reckon, the shield's going to go on first. Yeah. In the nick of time. Time to switch targets. 
All right, it's been 29 minutes. Volfu's here getting picked off from Stridex. So Stridex, who has amassed some ASF. Xbox about to get on the six. Uh, he's going to have to think twice about it. And indeed, he does. Doesn't want to fly over five enemy cruisers with even numbers. A second defense sat here from Neuro moving out. Again, I'd like to see him use it defensively to clear out these cruisers and causing your team a lot of problems here. Seeing more and more pressure here on the west side. Blaze doing a fantastic job. He's going to try and pick off this cruiser with a couple of gunships. Probably not going to work. Had they been Tech 3, probably would have worked. Yeah, so let's have a look at the eco then as we roll around just a few seconds away from the half hour. Taking a look at the totals then, it's 1.3 million versus 1.25 in favour of Team 1. And so the guys up top with about a 4% advantage overall at this moment in time. And if we take a look at the... Just briefly at the control, this is what we see here from Team 1. Obviously they've lost the lake. If we take a look at the land, it's, it's not quite 50%, is it? Otherwise, we'd expect to see the line stretching to the corner here. And so just under, if we take a look at Team 2's point of view, they've got control of the lake. Again, they're not pushing up here, but they're certainly down here. So even if we ignore the lake, it just feels that Team 2 got a minor advantage in terms of territory. Team 1 have got the advantage in terms of economy. major air fight insofar as the numbers that the players have and looks like both players backing off i gotta say they're pretty even though at first glance we've got 53 for team one and stridex with 39 for team two yeah this is here unfortunate for blaze i mean God of War lobbing in with artillery. You've got a million missiles. You've got, I don't know how many Tech 1 bombers here from God of War. 88. Blaze does send in his Tech 1. They're going after a Monkey Lord and they get it. How many times have I seen this lately? And it's not just Tech 1 bombers. I've seen a huge uptick since this last update. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring you any of the games, but as to proof, I have been analysing games. A huge uptick, especially in the pro-rated players, in going after experimentals with Tech 1 spam, whether it's Mantis or Flares. Granted, some of it was for the cheese, but I've seen it so effective. You're talking experimentals with 300 kills that haven't yet got one star of vet, and they're taken out. And it looks like here, somebody else has taken out is Blaze's front line. Finally collapsed in 32 minutes. And it's taken a huge team effort to do. We've seen Land and Air here from God of War. A fat boy from Butter, together with umpteen cruisers from Alex. It really was a team effort. I'll tell you what else, look at that experimental bomber there from nanocube noob one shot takes out all of those cruisers that have been harassing his base and his team what feels like all game tech 4 bomber dropping one into the main shield here there's a fat boy by that's a lot of cougars not where the experimental bomber wants to hang around ah, that's a lot of torrent class missile ships here from stridex so what's he got 12 of them that's sick 12 tech 3 aeon missile ships with their insane range what sort of range are we talking here well, there you go. It's like a Tech 2 UEF cruiser and check. Look at it dismantle the TAC missile defense. There must have been 20 TMDs there. The Cyber and Variety. And Blaze thinks, well, I've had it. What can I do? Blaze 
I, yeah, well, he was going to die now in 10 seconds time. I don't think anybody's going to disagree there with his decision to lob in the towel. His front line's collapsing. He's got two experimentals, a ton of spam. And as we've said, so many missile ships. I mean, what do you do? Xbox, or oh, Xbox, I beg your pardon, inherits what is left of his base. I mean, <laughs> look at the four dot rating spot here. But the best defense here would be to just spam out with a Tech One factory, just spam scouts out that are sort of zigzagging their way to try and tie up the missile of these ships. Experimental bomber here from Nanocube Noob once again trying to defend the base here. No doubt going after the chicken here from God of War. Xbox also with a bunch of gunships probably going to get taken out by the expert and they do indeed it's the experimental bomb taking out friendly and enemy units alike chicken down to about half health how many Volthus we got here now 23 they can put out 6,600 DPS between them sorry 1,700 the cost was 6,600. <laughs> that experimental bomber just took almost all of them out. But the chicken, importantly, is almost dead. Those few Vulthos should be able to finish it off. And indeed they do. Experimental bomber coming around this time with a much better target. Not taking out nearly half as many allied units. 112 kills. This fat boy over here would be a decent target. Go on, you need to keep using this experimental bomber. We've got a shed load of Tech 1 bombers here, but Xbox does have the air supremacy. Should be able to take those T1 bombers out, no problem. Experimental bomber here, this is a little too... This is uh, not helpful. Not helpful now. You've got... <laughs> Xbox got enough gunship, or had enough gunships there to deal with this. Best thing you can do is stop the reinforcements, perhaps a bomb here. Or better yet, go for the fat boy. And it looks like Nanocube Noob has heard us through the passage of time. Is redirecting his Tech 4 bomber. Bomb is away versus the fat boy and connects with it. Takes out the shield in one shot. Does eat a lot of fire from this navy. The cruisers specifically there from Alex. Bomber swings back round, Tech gets another one off, he tries to fly it away. Stridexer picks it off very nicely. A <laughs> fat boy with just 2,900 hit points left does survive. New missile defense here, none in the clip, gets taken out. Chicken over here trying to pick off some of these Percy's that have been sent through the water from Alex. Together with Percy's and Titans here, I don't think they're going to get anywhere. It looks like Alex agrees. He pulls them back before he wastes any more. Wow. Well, if we take a look versus five minutes ago, Team 1 having lost much of their western flank, they're relegated to the top corner now. Let's have a little look down to just three players on about 25% of the map at this moment in time. Most of the northern corner or the northern quadrant, should we say. Where they lack a bit in the very northeastern side, they gain a bit down the western flank. But really, it's 25% at best. Taking a look at team two, they haven't yet been able to capitalize on the gain. But Nanocube Noob apparently also taken out. I'm not sure if that was a destruction. It could have been that these missile ships destroyed his ion reactors. And Nanocube Noob stood too close to his own reactors as they went up. And thus it was counted as a control K when it was anything but. And so Team 1 down to just two players now.
But have a look at this. Neuro, how many defense? He's got six defense sats over in Strydex's base. Let's take a look at the economies. Totals 2.29 million versus 2.24. So we're talking a 2% disparity between the teams. And at this moment in time, a minor favor now to Team 2. And that's no surprise as we see them now dominating over 50% of the map. And this Navy that's just been relentless. As they continue to press. I mean, this is, you just can't hang around here. This, this is just all going to die unless you move them. See there, they've taken out a chicken bot. Yeah, this is just unfortunate here. God of War with an experimental unit. Let's have a little look. What's he, what's he working on? Another chicken bot. Nothing too exciting at this stage of the game. Why this is a lot of gunships, man, but they're not the best unit to work versus Navy. But then again, I suppose if that's all you've got, he's got 56 of them right here. And he's trying to pick off Alex's engineers that have very cheekily come forward to try and reclaim these experimental units. Stridex emboldened by the Navy is just free to lazily patrol over the top of them. Ah, oh, man. I just think when the defense sats had the chance, they could have just muted this Navy 15 minutes ago. But Neuro instead opts to attack, and instead of going after Stridex's base, he switches targets, goes after Butthurt. Oh, he's cracked through, but hurt with a defense sat of his own. Loses that. We've got six defense sats over his base. I mean, the combined effect of those is horrific. Taking a look up here, Xbox. Oh, he's working on a YOLO. And it's 90% complete. He's got two shields. And at least thus far, has it been spotted? No, it has not. The other team have no idea it's even there. And that, has he got a stealth gen? Yes, he does. Xbox has a stealth gen. And look how effective that is. They do not know construction has begun. Of course, it won't hide from a stealth plane going that way, but it would seem that the players are far too busy at this stage to concern themselves with such things. And as if things weren't bad enough here, look at Neuro. He's just going defense sats for days. He's now got himself Tech 3 artillery. He's capped that off with fusions to increase the wrath. He's got a couple of sats on him, thanks to Butthurt. But, you know, it's like a two versus six. Don't take a genius to figure out which way that's going to go. And to add into the mix, he's also got himself the Tech 3 artillery. Although, for now, the Tech 3 artillery and the sats going their own way. Strydex are coming quite far forward here for an air fight. Got a couple of Percy's uncomfortably close there to Xbox base, but he's got more than enough to deal with it. And that is the YOLO nuke, the first nuke out. And so at 42 and a half minutes, let's take a look at the scene. Team 1 down to around, let's say around 15%-ish of the map. Maybe 20 if we're generous, although most of this just undefended mechs. And the first nuke is out. Another defense sat moving in from Stridexer. We've got a push up here from the chicken going into Xbox, mostly undefended base. And the experimental nuke is coming across. And is shot down. 
And at this moment in time, I think we need to split the screen. So I'm going to hide the scoreboard just for a sec. Move the map down there. We've absolutely got to focus on this push over here. Two chickens are still on. And over here, we can see the damage. Oh, it's a defensive nuke. An experimental nuke used defensively. God of War. I don't know how much she just lost, but all of his supporting units, at least a hundred there. But the chickens are still both alive. One very heavy health, the other one not so much. And God of War looks like he's allowing them to get a bit of distance, so the damage from one, but I'd continue to press. And he does. One. And the first chicken goes down. The second one. This is a mistake bringing it this way. It's got far too long to go. Keep going this way, man. Ah, It's just too far to get anyway. It's got multiple gunships on him. But if we take a look over here, the next experimental nuke is out. I suspect these defense sats have done what they came to do. Let's go back to uh, single screen. As we track the experimental nuke here. Did it get the damage done? Well, I'm not seeing any nuke defense in Alex's main base. Oh, no. He gets a mava on. Oh. <laughs> if that ain't enough to make your rage quit, nothing ever will be. The mava gets online. It gets a stiffy points right at the enemy. And then. <laughs> Just before the first shell comes out at the end. It eats an experimental nuke. Couldn't have been timed better if you planned it in a script. Beautiful use there. And the next experimental nuke is on the way. Let's have a little look at the map control now. Well, I don't know if they were 15% before. I said maybe 15. Well, now it's looking definitely 15 or less still a shed like how many is neuro got down here seven defense sats down south the next experimental nuke impacts and that one into empty space xbox no doubt fired two of them thinking he would need to to crack through the defense but he only needed one out comes the next he does have a couple of defense sats still here from butthurt but i don't think butthurt is going to be able to break through We've got numerous layered Seraphim shields here. He's got drone kennels for days that can just reinforce his shield. Look how quickly this thing is reloading. That is horrifically quick. Where's the next one? I mean, this navy here from Stridex are just methodically picking apart the base. We've got another huge attack over here from God of War on the western flank. Keep the chicken moving. It is versus another chicken there, though, from Xbox Defensive. He does pick it off. And the next experimental nuke is out. The previous one shot down. My goodness, man. Credit to Stridex for hanging on versus all of these sats. So he's got seven of them still on his base. But again, it completely takes him out of the game. He isn't able to do anything else than micro his shield. He's got his navy just in position. That's obviously still causing a lot of damage. But credit to God of War here for continuing to push on the western flank. And he's taken out large numbers of economic structures belonging to Xbox. The problem is for Team 2... The experimental nuke is built. You know, they don't need the economy quite the same. Let's have a look at Xbox. Well, I guess he does. He is short on it on mass. Oh, let's have a look at the influence. So there we see now the influence of Team 2. At least 80% of the map. I think I'm going to call this game the 80-20 rule. Because look at that. They're controlling 80% of the map. But the other team controlling just 20% of the map. At least at this moment in time. Contributing 80% of the damage. 
And the experimental nuke moving in over Butthurt's base. Butthurt, who has got one. Oh, it's so close. He's got, look at that, it's like 90% onto the next anti nuke. <laughs> I could make another joke about his name, but you know what? I'm going to spare myself the embarrassment. Either way, that is just terrible. Look at this, Tech 3 artillery just picking away. It's, it's even Euro. He hasn't even bothered aiming it. It's just, just let it go. He's got enough defense stats here to keep himself going. How many has he got? He's got nine of them. Experimentals, meanwhile, getting awful close to the experimental new launcher here. But I think once again it's time to split the screen. Let's take a look at the experimental new launcher. One of the chickens goes down, the other one getting awfully close. Hide the scoreboard. Stridex as main base with so many defense sats. The next chicken getting in real close. Just one shield remain. He gets into the shield. He starts unloading. How on earth did that plasma ball not get through? Oh my goodness. That is so like team one. That is a little bit. Look, look at Stridex's base. The sats break through. New defense one is down. New defense two. Oh my goodness, that is so close. 80 hit points out of 3,800. Oh, the sats go for the fusion. Clever move. The splash damage from the fusion and that's Stridex's main base. God of War, meanwhile, with an experimental bomber going in after the experimental nuke. Stridex had taken out there by Neuro. The experimental bomber gets one off, doesn't crack the shields unsurprisingly. Doesn't get much else done, but with this much build capacity here, I reckon he can just knock together Sam so quick. There's the second bomb again. No shields cracking or buckling. We've got a few that are damaged, but more shields springing up all the time. I think we can go back to single screen. There we see the next experimental nuke making its way over. Experimental bomber still not cracking through. And the experimental new breaks through to Stridex's X base. May take out some of these defense sats. And gets at least two or three of them. But otherwise, Neuro gets away unharmed, unscathed. Let's get that map back into position. Tech 4 bomber still overhead, but again, not getting anywhere. This is like the fifth bomb away. And now a shed load of SAM sites. Bombers shot down. Shields remain intact. x bock actually gone to the bother of repairing half of his uh, experimental new launcher. Credit to God of War. Look how far he's pushing, how deep he is with his bots. But her trying to send spam across. It is a two versus two. Let's take a look now. This is the situation at 51 minutes. Take a look from the other team's point of view. They're down to like 10% of the map. Oh my goodness. 10% of the map, but you've got defense stats for days and an experimental new launcher. Which way do you think this is going to go, guys? Come on, place your bets. 4 million versus 3.2 in favor of team 2. So the southern team, 750,000 mass or three quarters of a million. But overall, there's the next experimental nuke from Xbox. And it doesn't look like this spam here belonging to Butthurt getting close. Experimental bomber again here from God of War. He's following it up with a bunch of tech 1. The experimental bomber, I'm not sure, it does get a bomb away. You can see a lot of those shields there taking damage. The bombers are next. Let's have a look at the experimental nuke. Where's it going for? And they were able to take out just the forward few shields there. That is all. The experimental nuke coming into the back of Butthurt's base. Oh, but her who was just working on nothing but shields is taken out. 
along with a bunch of support commanders. And suddenly, God of War is versus the world. God of War dominating 80 plus percent of the map is unable to do anything because as soon as he tries to concentrate anything of value, it's immediately going to attract the standoff weapons. How many times have we seen players get standoff weapon after standoff weapon and they lose because they invested too much in something like the YOLO? Kind of like what we saw over here with the Mavor. All the investment went in the Mavor. And it, it, because of that, you just left your flanks exposed and the other team was able to capitalize on that. In this case, the flank being no nuclear defense or not enough. In comes the next experimental nuke. Huge base belonging to God of War. Look how many shields. Those shields were all to help with the defense sat. No more. God of War. I mean, he's still got a few ASF. Let's have a look at the Ecos now. 4.5 million versus 3.3 .3 in favor of God of War. So he's over a million mass ahead now. So we saw him 750 ahead last time we looked. And so, huge disparity on Eco, but he just can't do anything with it. Nero now with five defense sats again in the area. I mean, they will be able to chew through these shields should they wish. It's like he's deciding to go for other targets. In comes the next experimental nuke. God of War just trying to desperately chuck in Tech 1 bombers into the mix. It's got ASF. I mean, he's still got air supremacy. Xbox with a couple of very well placed chickens here going up against Tech 3 siege bots. God of War unable to break through, but he continues to send a spam north. I think that last new was shot down. Perhaps Strategic owing to this. Detected. Yeah, look at that. Since when do they count kills on the strategic missile defense? So I guess it can only have been the missile. Xbox realizes, well, you can't have that many missiles. Sends another missile right at it. God of War, not stupid, realizes he's got to try and build stuff under the sea and does so accordingly. And at 55 minutes, he's trying to spam and flank using the spam into Nero's base. Nero with a shed load of tech one. And just enough broadswords here, even if there were flax in the mix. That's going to put that lot to bed. I mean, look at him. Credit to him for going spam. That experimental nuke does connect. Does it take out the strategic missile defense? Damage radiates outwards. And it looks like it was just outside the damage radius. Just. I don't think it's going to matter much. Two experimental bombers now from God of War moving in. Versus the experimental nuke. The first bomber gets taken down instantly. Both release a bomb. The second one flies off map to turn around, but I suspect it was shot down. Let's keep our eye out. God of War still with their supremacy. What about these? Uh, these chickens are holding. The bomber does come back round with a few hundred hit points, but is shot down. And again, one shield. That's all you need. Holds. And then all of them blink back on. Well, I reckon that's it. And God of War knows it. He lobs in the top. 56 minutes, 47 seconds there. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you enjoyed that game. Absolutely fantastic the way I see it. And so thank you very much for watching. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, from somewhere deep inside the UK, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. And big shout out to everybody at the FAF team who was trying to work out on these issues. I'm aware it's annoying for everybody else. Really annoying for, as a caster. It's just impossible uh, to find good games. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care. Bye-bye.